just to summarize now in terms of gun on silicon for power devices, there are commercially available gun for, uh, I will focus on uh, those for voltages above 600 volts. Uh, the companies uh, selling these devices are Transform, which is a spin-off company from University of Santa Barbara in California, and they are now in collaboration with Ohm Semiconductor, actually, for normally off devices based on the um, based on the cast code configuration, and they have devices. If you go on their website, you can buy them. Uh, 600 volts and ohm resistance in between 52 million and 290 million, depending on the uh, current rating. Uh, the other company is the GAN system. Uh, GAN system has normally all pumps, uh, not based on cast code uh, technology. If we don't know what it is based on, uh, uh, they sell devices uh, um, working up to 650 volts. And, uh, and then companies such as International Rectifier, which now is Infineon and International Rectifier, um, they have cast codes configuration coming from IR, and Infineon has normally all devices in collaboration with Panasonic, so GLT. Uh, this is a prediction of gallium nitride on silicon in terms of uh, sales. And they predict that in 2024 uh, it will reach one billion dollar uh, market. Uh, so there is uh, really lots of effort into this new technology, and they are actually already selling uh, devices. And um, what we have in this slide is the CAGR, which is the compound annual growth rates. It's just a market, a figure, just to say in uh, uh, time to market for gun technology. So let's say in 2020, they expect to have devices that go as high as 1.7 kV and uh, to have already 600 volts, 620, uh, 650 up to 1.2 kV for electric vehicles and hybrid electric vehicles uh, charges. At the moment, there is a market below 600 volts. There is, yeah. Uh, uh, the range of 200 volts. Even lower, 1020 volts for DC-DC converters. Yes. Um, so, summary and conclusions. Um, we have seen the gallium nitride has unique material properties, um, such as the wet band gap uh, uh, and the low increase in current concentration deriving from that. Um, and these are some of the reasons why gallium nitride is one of the most promising material and substitute for silicon in the 600 volts, 1.2 uh, kV range uh, of voltage applications. We have seen that one of the key aspects of the gun is not only the wide bang of nature, but it appears electricity of the material itself. So the fact that, uh, that the interface between an organ and gun is uh, characterized by very high polarization charge and therefore very high electron channel concentration. Uh, we looked at the main switch uh, for power application based on non gun, uh, that is the hand. Uh, we have seen both normally on and off technologies. Uh, normally off technologies are the ones recently considered. And there are several solutions that seem to uh, work uh, uh, quite well. Uh, there are also gunshot key barrier diodes. I didn't mention them, but they work exactly as the uh, hand if you just consider a gate to drain current. So without taking into account the, the source, you have gates shot key and a drain ohmic, and you can make a shot key diode out of that. Uh, understanding the reliability issues of these devices is crucial to uh, design uh, devices that are not affected by them. And um, there are several ways to do it, and this is what I do in my research, but I uh, uh, don't think it's uh, too much the focus of this lesson uh, lecture, so I would uh, I would skip that. But it's important to know that there are traps in the devices and uh, there are ways of characterizing them. Um, and then the progress in material quality and device optimization has been made since the very first time uh, gallium nitride was taken into consideration for power applications. And uh, this allowed the commercialization of uh, 600 volt devices. So um, I don't know if I have a um, few minutes. I'm not aware of the time. 10 minutes. 10 minutes, Ten I think. Minutes. Very, very quickly, we can go pros and cons of the other white bank of materials. Uh, I don't know if you talked about silicon carbide. I yes, think it's in some I, slides. So I just, some, yes. 
Okay, so just to compare it with GAN now that we know about GAN, um, silicon carbide is a more mature technology than others, but specifically for short key diodes. Uh, and uh, it has been proven to be successful in the, in the market and have an added uh, oxide. Uh, the problem is the low channel mobility that I mentioned at the beginning of the lecture and uh, the instability of the threshold voltage at high temperature. And uh, it also has some defects in the structure and it's quite expensive. Uh, diamond is the other material that is considered at the moment that is only research into this field. Because uh, there is a search because the physical properties are uh, considered among the best. The bend gap is even higher than gallium nitride and silicon carbide, so the critical electric field associated to it is even higher. Uh, but the problem is that it's very hard to process, and the doping, it's almost impossible. There is only P dop, uh, possibility to P dop the diamond, uh, so P and juncture are not uh, formed, and it's very expensive. Gallium nitride, once again, not because I want to sell it, but because it is true. <laughs> uh, it's the cheapest of all if you grow it on silicon. Uh, so it has CMOS compatible uh, processing. There is a good availability of large diameters. Uh, the two that mobility has values as high as 2000 centimeters square per volt per second. And the charge density without any doping is of the order 1 13 centimeters square. Uh, high saturation velocity, which means devices are fast. Fast devices, uh, smaller passive components, uh, smaller size, uh, cost reduction. Possibility of integrating, and this I mentioned already, circuits in the silicon substrate. Um, uh, problems with GAN, it does not have a native oxide, but silicon nitride insulator is used, uh, and it works quite well, to be honest. Uh, it normally on devices, but we've seen that there are normally of technology and the reliability uh, needs to be addressed uh, to, uh, before selling the devices in GAN. And uh, yeah, the fact that it's a lateral structure anyway, so the scalability of the current depends on a lateral dimension and on the area of the, of, the, of the device. You can't simply increase the vertical dimension to have um, a longer drift region. Um, but uh, there are recently works that um, mention possibility to grow gun on gun, and in this way having a uh, vertical structure. It's just uh, very expensive at the moment, so it is poor uh, theoretical uh, analysis. And I think this concludes uh, the lecture. So thank you for your attention. And thank you. Yeah. Okay, guys, this concludes our lecture. Thank you to Dr. Lombardi for the, for the presentation, for the lecture. It is quite difficult. I mean, uh, we are very lucky because uh, there are very few people that have the, the expertise that studies, they studied the material from an engineering point of view. There are a lot of people that study the material from a physics point of view. There, are, there is a lot of people that study circuits and can uh, work very well with silicon-related materials. But since the, the topic is quite new, very few engineers have this, both this mixed ex expertise, and uh, we are lucky to hear these, uh, these things from, from her.